How do you? My name is Tatiana Baig. I'm Paige Ferguson. I'm Jordan Taylor. And we are JTP Water Solutions. Our project is the Onsite Sewage Facility Research Project. Our client is Dr. Anish Dantrania. Our advisors are Dr. Gabriele Benaiti, Ryan Gerlich, and Dr. June Wolf. And our project manager is Dr. Nikolov. The overall project scope of the OSSF research program is to find more efficient and useful ways to use the effluent from on-site sewage facilities. While our objective is to design a plumbing system and find locations for soil moisture sensors to facilitate research of the three projects being done at the site. The three projects are one, to analyze the effects of different dosing methods by using composite samplers with the aerobic treatment units. Two, clarifying the sewage effluent enough to be reused in the home as non-potable water. And three, using soil moisture sensors to detect the efficiency of low pressure dosing systems. The project deliverables are a plumbing system design, sampler locations, locations of soil moisture samplers, a cost analysis, code for the samplers, and an updated AutoCAD file. The major constraints we encountered are where the plumbing could be laid, the security at Relis, and working with the samplers already purchased. The installation of the plumbing system is constrained by an existing sidewalk. It would have been too time and cost inefficient to tear up the existing sidewalk, run the plumbing lines to three sample sites, and reconstruct the sidewalk. The security at Relis was a constraint because the self-refrigerated samplers are expensive. To prevent them from being stolen, they needed to be placed in the locked shed on site. The refrigerated samplers were purchased prior to us joining this project, and it came with the vinyl tubing that will transport the samples, but it needed to go within a piping to protect it. We chose the black irrigation polyethylene piping. These are a few of our resources used for our project. The first one is a version of our fluid mechanics textbook that reminded us of the minor losses associated with designing a plumbing system and how to avoid them. Second is an article talking about the time and cost efficiencies of using composite sampling because we wanted to check and see if composite sampling was the best option. And lastly, the manual for the composite samplers being used, which helped us code the samplers. Our design approach started when we were first given the locations of the sample sites. From there, we decided on the composite sampler locations. You will see a map and a couple of slides, slides which will allow you to see our final design. Four samplers are going in the lock shed and three will go along a previously existing wall on the site. We then designed the plumbing system which will connect the samplers and the sample sites. Once the plumbing design was finished, we were tasked with creating a prompt and response sheet for the samplers and a new layer on the existing AutoCAD file of our plumbing design. Lastly is the implementation of our plumbing design at the research site. With COVID-19, the implementation of the plumbing system has been postponed until further notice and our client and faculty members are working on the AutoCAD file because we don't have access to the program from home and we are advised not to go to campus. Our final design is outlined in this slide. Uh, for the sampler placement, we could have placed each sampler next to the sample site, but they are really expensive, so we decided to place them in the locked shed along the left wall of the shed that you'll see in the next slide. Um, the ATU sampling method, we decided to use the existing fiberglass tanks. They are really old, so they might need to be replaced, but right now it looks like they're gonna be okay. We could have used a T-pipe at the exit of each tank, but that can cause clogging and it's also a lot of extra construction that we didn't wanna to have to do. For the piping material, we decided to use the one inch black irrigation polyethylene pipe rather than PVC because PVC needs 90 degree turns and that will cause more losses for the samplers. And the three inch vinyl tubing is the tubing that came with the avalanche samplers. Um, the sampler code um, prompts each sampler to get 100 milliliters every hour for 24 hours and put it all in one bottle as a composite sample. We also made some maintenance and calibration codes for that as well. The water reuse samplers were not placed inside of the shed because there is that sidewalk there that we didn't want to have to do construction on and also the distance from those samplers to the shed is too large. We didn't wanna have that many losses. 
And Tatiana will talk more about the soil moisture sensors in a couple slides. This is the map of our final pipe design. As you can see, the samplers on the right hand side are cut off from the shed by that sidewalk. So the refrigerators on the right hand side are going to be purchased separately and we'll use non-refrigerated samplers inside of each of those. They're just less expensive, so it doesn't matter as much if they get stolen. Um, on the left hand side, you can see where the samplers will be placed in the shed. They'll be along that left hand side um, along the wall. And you can see there's sweeping turns rather than 90 degree angles. And those fiberglass tanks up there are the ones previously mentioned. For the moisture sensor portion of the project, we're going to be using time domain reflectometer moisture sensors in the LPD drain field. There are four different replicas in the LPD drain fields, but we'll only be using the moisture sensors in the first replica. On the right hand side of the screen at the top, there is a figure of the layout of the different distribution pipes. Each of the distribution pipes will be placed in a trench and each of the pipes has a different treatment type that we're going to be comparing. These treatment types are a leaching chamber, orifice shield, and a control. Each distribution pipe has five holes in it. At the second and fourth hole, we will have monitoring stations and each monitoring station will have eight moisture sensors. There's a total of six monitoring stations, so 48 moisture sensors will be used. In the bottom right-hand corner is a cross-section of one of the monitoring stations and the location of all the eight moisture sensors that will be used for the monitoring stations. The moisture sensors are placed adjacent to and underneath the monitoring station. The locations were picked because this is where the biggest difference in moisture soil content will be read between the different treatment types. For the three other replicas, the comparisons will be done by taking week weekly soil samples and analyzing those soil samples through the gravimetric method. These are the codes that we made for the automated samplers. On the left is the sampling code itself. So it tells each one to take 24 samples over the course of one day and put them all in an 18 liter bottle as a composite sample. On the right, you can see the maintenance codes that we made so that they can perform maintenance more easily. These are the um, programs that are already on each of the samplers, so we have just outlined them here. On the left is the calibration code that we made. Over time, each sampler is going to get less accurate. So we made this just to make sure each sampler knows how much 100 milliliters really is. They'll use this code every once in a while just to make sure each sampler is working efficiently. On the right hand side is just some maintenance operations that we have outlined, um, listing some ways to extend the life of the pumps and of the tubing. For capital investment cost, the total overall cost ranges from $36,000 to $38,900, and the total to be purchased cost ranges from $12,000 to $14,000. The variation in cost comes from the variation in price of the refrigerators that we'll be purchasing and the possibility of having to purchase new fiberglass tanks. For operational costs, the Tanks have to be pumped every two years to ensure that they run smoothly and that they are cleaned out. And this cost is $270 for every two years that we have to pump it. There are possible leak repairs that we have to worry about with concrete tanks, but we cannot fully determine what the cost of these will be at this time because the price varies on the type of repairs that need to be done. The utilities and operating cost in samplers and refrigerators is a minor cost that was not calculated, but it will be determined by the client later on. Some past dates that we have met are the ATU tank installation that was done in early March. Um, the code for the samplers we finished around April 6th and the final poster for our showcases we finished April 9th. For the AGLS and engineering showcase, both of those have been moved to virtual online presentations and the implementation of the sampler piping is unknown at this time due to COVID-19 delays. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.